as you know, Crowder released a video saying that an unnamed company offered him a contract that he felt was exploitive. And we did a long video on that, and you should watch it, because what's really, I mean, I enjoy that the, these guys are fighting, all right? And, um, but there are two things that really come out of this for me. One is the enormous amounts of resources the right has in this space that we work in. The money that, that Crowder was going to get to produce his show and to pay himself a, 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 a month of it is more than our entire budget, including everybody getting paid, including myself. I, I, significantly more. And the resources that they get, that the Daily Wire got, they raised a ton of money because somebody came in and gave them money. And I don't know that you can make a deal like that unless you're getting subsidized. Now, maybe down the road, you know, people be investing in it and whatnot, and it'll pay off for them. But the bottom line is, this is there's a lot of money on there. And the other, the other thing that is important about this was in that video yesterday about Crowder, where, or Wednesday, when he's talking about the, the notion that a contract can be exploitive. Mm -hmm. If a contract can be exploitive, by definition, then Crowder is, his entire worldview about economics is been a lie. Let alone the nature of the contact, the contract that he claims is exploitative, which right. is a multi-million dollar co contract. But we didn't know that at the time. Yes. He didn't tell us at the time, and it was irrelevant to the point that if a contract can be exploitative, if you can enter into an agreement that is exploitive, his whole worldview about economics and the way the marketplace works has been a lie. Mm -hmm. Because under his, um, you know, uh, conservative libertarian uh, ideology, there is no exploitiveness if two people agree to something. And so you can't have a contract that's exploitive because you just wouldn't sign it. And then it's just a piece of paper and then it's just like a proposal and it's nothing. So the idea that you can be exploited in this way puts a lie to everything he says it's a volunteerism yeah all of it but uh in this instance the only value i think you know for the rest of the story is that like they have a tremendous amount of resources and the other value is it's also extremely fun for me yes. so let's get into this um so he says this he he, he doesn't announce who it is the Daily Wire realizes everybody's going to figure out that it's them. I mean, we did. We did. It was pretty and easy. It was pretty easy to figure out because it was either uh, him or Prager. And I guess Prager's owned by the Daily Wire, too. Is that right? Oh, Somebody yeah, told me right. that. So, either way, it just it's it, he was not making it subtle at all. And no. so and, and uh, honestly, he, and he said it wasn't the blaze. He should have been right. He should have been explicit because they immediately come out and counter him, yeah, counter it. it and was, he looks chicken shit for not saying exactly their name. backfired. Immediately. Yeah. Well, they knew. I mean, this is like one of the, the you know, the, the, there is also a lesson to be learned here in terms of communications. You don't let a vacuum exist. <laughs> you don't let a vacuum it exist. I mean, like it, it, this is true in in this world, but like there have been times like you know when my kids at school and she's like sort of on the periphery of something, and if you don't get in there and stake your claim, somebody else will take it and you'll be on the wrong end of it. And so that's what they did. And this dude uh, Jeremy Bor uh, Boring, who is uh, Ben Shapiro's uh, partner. Uh, comes out and basically walks through the entire contract, which I found actually sort of interesting to find out the way that they structure these deals. But there's a couple of things that were really interesting in it. You should watch the, the video, I guess, if you want to know. But first off, they reveal that the contract, which Crowder had mentioned the onerous parts of the day before, he neglected to mention that it was worth $50 million over four years, with an option that they had, to be fair, for another $12 million a year in years five and six, and the opportunity to make even more cash. Now, Crowder had to deliver his own show, but I can tell you, the idea that, the, that his operating budget costs, let's just say $2 million a year, that would be insane. The, the, uh, but just even grant that, that's 10 million bucks in his pocket. And 
So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but here's bor uh, boring. Some of the things that were also interesting. Here's boring, mocking Crowder. And this whole thing was done with like a smile and a shiv mm -hmm. that was being stuck into them. Like, he's a great guy. He's We're very, friends. very talented. We wish him the we best. Love I love other. that. Yeah. Uh, very talented. But let Follow me just also say, work. he's also a liar. <laughs> um, here's boring. Basically saying that Crowder lies when he pretends that he built this. Because Crowder, as uh, Boring reminds us, has been paid by billionaire after billionaire. He's never had to create the company that actually distributes, markets, and monetizes all of that content. You know, he talks in his video about being one of the only true independent conservative voices. Uh, and I find that incredibly offensive. You know, <laughs> Stephen, the whole time I've known him, has, has worked for someone else. Uh, has been paid by someone else. That doesn't mean other people tell him what to say. He's a very independent voice, and, and that's good. So is Matt Walsh, so is Candace Owens, so is Ben Shapiro, so is Michael Knowles, so is uh, Brett Cooper. Uh, but Stephen, you know, as much as Just also, um, the, the, the idea that these guys are such independent voices all manage to say the same thing, except for maybe a slight disagreement as to how anti-Semitic one Kanye, person is yeah. or another. That's about it. And speaking of that, uh, they were trying to hire extremely anti-Semitic Stephen Crowder, despite Ben Shapiro's constant, uh, you know, pr proclamations that he stands against anti-Semitism. I mean, they, uh, uh, short of anti-Semitism, uh, it is hard to find any daylight between yeah. what any of these independent thinkers uh, say. And also, it's also to har hard to find daylight between what these independent thinkers say and these billionaires want them to say. It's just so, like, if you're a billionaire, you can find somebody who agrees with you, and then you put them on, and then they, 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 they don't have to, they, they said whatever they wanted to say. Well, yeah, okay. But the point is, um, Crowder has just been paid by billionaires because he's a man of the people. Oh, so is uh, Brett Cooper. Uh, but Stephen, you know, as much or more than any of them, a very independent voice. Uh, but he's not exactly a self-made man. That, that's not true. He, he was paid by PJTV when I met him, which was owned by a billionaire at the time. Then he was paid by CRTV for a number of years, which was owned by a billionaire uh, at the time. Uh, then he was paid by The Blaze, which was subsidized by a billionaire. Uh, yeah. Until Tyler Carden, one of the real genius businessmen in our movement, turned the company around and, and made it profitable. Uh, during all of that time, Stephen drove a ton of revenue. He was, he's incredibly valuable. I'm not suggesting that he wasn't driving va uh, value. He was. I'm only saying he didn't have to build all of that. He didn't have to think about it. And he didn't necessarily have to be profitable. And he doesn't know for a fact that he was profitable. In other words, because, I am now said, suggesting that he publicly, wasn't driving revenue. But, the, uh, uh, but ne nevertheless, and, and we don't know what his numbers are. He didn't even know his own numbers mm -hmm. in terms of revenue. Uh, you must have a sense of it, but this is an important point because none of these people, none of them have done it without getting huge chunks of money. The only one, to be fair, is probably Tim Poole who got like uh, $750,000. He was paid for about, I don't know, maybe it was a year's worth of work at that, um, that, that company that went out of business. I can't remember what it was. Fusion or something? Fusion, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. And, and, and he parlayed that. And I, I, maybe he did get money from uh, other places. But, um, but that was basically it. The Daily Wire, all of these right-wing enterprises get huge billionaire money. Mm -hmm. Rumble, huge billionaire money. Substack, billionaire money. There's a lot of money going in, whether it's the Mercers or whether it's some like, you know, other guy. They're all getting billionaire money. And, and, and Crowder's just like that. And we should say it like this. This is important. You know, people make take issue with the fact that we had a one-year deal with Peacock where Still we drowning. just licensed. We licensed it. We didn't get billions. We got thousands. But that's fine because we didn't have to do anything for them. They didn't know our content. We had no uh, editorial. I've said it explicitly before. The only thing we did, we had to format the show so that it ended in 55 minutes, the first half. And that was it. We would take a break, and you could see that. There was no, there was no direct lines of communication. They never knew what we were doing. 
They didn't know what our revenue numbers were, this and that. It was just a licensing deal. The deal that they were offering Crowder was not a licensing deal. The deal they were offering Crowder is, we own your material. We exploit it. We pay you a lot of money for it, but we own the material. That's it. Not a licensing deal. It was, we own it. We own certain uh, social media channels and this and that. The, uh, the deal I have with MSNBC last year, 2022, was in the hundreds of dollars I made. In the hundreds of dollars. In other words, less than four figures. Um, it was actually less than three figures, I think, uh, last year in particular. But so the point is, is that like these people talk like they're independent. They're not independent. If you're getting paid money to go on Rumble, big money from uh, Rumble, big money, because there are people on Rumble who mm -hmm. get big money for it. Eh, you're not that independent. Somebody knows why they want you there. And it's important to undercut that because what Daily Wire is trying to do as well is build this new mechanism that will challenge Fox News and get a young conservative audience that's going to be online. And they'll brand themselves as independent or distinct from other conservative media. But they're just, the, they're this, just it's, the same, it's the same shit. And, and what was also fascinating was when Boring talked about the movement. He talked about it like it's like... The, the distinction between business and their movement is nil. Mm -hmm. The way that you are, you, you, you succeed in the conservative movement is you generate revenue, period. That's it. That's the way that they determine that. Here is, um, this is uh, really funny. This is where Boring responds to Crowder's assertion that their con contract terms... Uh, uh, about demonetization and context strikes are trying to contain and censor him. Uh, but this is this is also uh, pretty revealing. But we knew, no, Stephen, at his level, you know, his history, his his um, his experience, he's, he just needs a big guarantee. He's earned it. But we still have to replicate in the deal some measure of that shared responsibility. And that's all this was meant to accomplish. You say, well, it's the same in the end anyway, because you're still telling him. I'm positive. To be something. clear here, their contract says if you are banned or if you are demonetized on, on some of these platforms and we have 90 days to try and get more advertisers or whatnot, and we can't, we're going to take back 25% of the revenue. Now, 25%, 90 days happens to be 25% of the year. That's why they get that 25% figure. And what they reveal is what their business strategy is for both of these uh, companies in this inadvertently. I don't know if they realize like how damning this is. We keep all the good racism and anti-Semitism behind the paywall. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we make our money. To accomplish. You say, well, it's the same in the end anyway, because you're still telling him if you say something YouTube doesn't like, we're taking away your money. Well, no, if it, YouTube would be the one taking away the money. We're just saying that we can't bear the entire brunt of that. But it's even, I think what Stephen's like, uh, they, 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 suggesting they, 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 here is kind of even more disingenuous than that because I actually kind of came up with this whole concept by watching Stephen Crowder. I mean, I mentioned it before, Stephen created this idea of piss off YouTube segment at Mug Club. And I saw it and thought it was genius. What does it mean? It means Stephen can go on YouTube speak to a huge audience. In fact, most of his audience, that's where they engage with him, right? The subscribers are a very small percentage of Steven's audience. Mug Club is a very small percentage of his audience. YouTube is the vast, overwhelming majority of Steven's audience. Uh, he can go on there and he can be risque and he can, he can do what he wants to do, but he, but he can be calculated too. And he can say, there are some things that I simply can't say here because these bastards hate free speech. For those things, come over to Mug Club and become a subscriber. And then for 30 minutes a day at The Blaze, he could say whatever he wanted. And I thought that was a genius thing. And I implemented it at Daily Wire because I was inspired by Stephen, who again, very- All right. Mm. Well, what is, well, I mean, what, like, what, what, let's talk about for a moment, like what YouTube doesn't want you to say. We get monetized from time to time, uh, demonetized from time to time on YouTube. 
right? Like, you know, if if things are like, you know, uh, there's there's violence that we're talking about. Talk about ISIS. We're talking about ISIS, or we're talking. I mean, that that may even get this whole segment demonetized <laughs> by saying that word by the the way they do it. But um, Thanks, or you know, things that advertisers don't want to be associated with. Sometimes there's some stuff like uh, around uh, you know abortion and other things. But what is it that YouTube doesn't want him to say? It is. And this is only a relatively recent phenomenon, right? COVID denial. Harassment mm-hmm. of gay people. Vaccine denial. But then the rest of it is homophobia, transphobia, racism, anti-Semitism. What else? And their business model. And he's admitting it. For both Crowder and for the Daily Wire is, hey, we're going to reach a wide audience and we're going to troll. We're going to troll for the people who want to hear the racist stuff, the anti-Semitic stuff, the transphobic stuff, the misogynist stuff. Ba-da-da-da-da-da. Follow Charge. us behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. And this is what they're doing. This is like when, we, when, you hear t- when you hear talk about this person or that person is a funnel for radicalization. This is what you're talking about. Yeah. We go out, I hint to you, this, there's more stuff behind the curtain. The strong stuff. Come a little bit deeper. Yeah. Come deeper into the system. Get them hooked, and then they get the real good racism stuff behind the pit. And this is what we used to talk about with Dave Rubin, too. Like, if you think of a funnel, it just widens out. This guy's, th- th- what this guy is talking about is what they call in marketing literally a funnel. And there was a time where Dave Rubin was on the wider part of that funnel. Yeah, I think to a certain extent, like, you know, folks like Greenwald, to certain, arguably, also on yeah. the wider part of that funnel. And they get as many as they can in the wide spectrum, and then they funnel them down, and they take them deeper into the wormhole, behind the curtain, and it also ends up being a money-making venture. It's Some also people how do cults by, work, by the way, as well. There's, there is <laughs> an authoritarian uh, schematic here, without a doubt. You can listen if you listen to like you know stuff about uh, how uh, authoritarian cults work. This is what it is, and they draw you in deeper. They troll on the wider thing. They take you in into this community, and then everybody else bad. That's the way it works. And these guys are admitting it. They're admitting it, and they're basing their business. Like we keep stuff behind a paywall too, but basically it's just like stuff like. You know, where we're mocking people. Extra content. It's it, not, there, there's not a distinction between, no. I mean, except for the, the, the one distinction we make is that the first hour is more academic or more serious news based. It's funnier behind the paywall. But, yeah, theoretically. But there's no, there's no radical. But we do Freebie Friday, yeah. and it's not because, like, oh, today we're not doing the, uh, the stuff that YouTube doesn't like, so we can do it. No, it's just like, because we're too lazy to cut it up. And it's, I'm hard pressed to think of any other leftist network that has a model that would be similar where there's more radical stuff behind the paywall no it's all it's all open it's much more transparent much more transparent because this stuff like you know we you know we release a lot of this stuff in one format or another anyways but it's fascinating that this is their business model yeah and scary by the way and scary all right now let's move into what uh appears to be Crowder's strategy if he has one and this is where we get into a timeline because uh, this was really interesting Crowder when he came out with his video two days ago made it seem like he's been looking around since he parted ways with the blaze which because of a video we watched by the quartering guy, who I don't know anything about that guy other than he set up uh, Crowder's thing. We're not going to look at that yeah. video yet because it's going to be important later. But it seemed to be st- sudden, his departure with, with the blaze. And it seemed to have happened sometime in early December when his contract came up. And uh, there's a couple of things that are interesting here. And I would say if you're, uh, you know, I know we have reporters who, who listen to the show and look at these clips. If I was a reporter, there's an interesting business question that comes up in this, in this segment. Because remember, he's under contract with the Blaze until the, around early December. 
And I've been in contracts like this before. You're not supposed to be negotiating uh, other jobs when you're under contract like this. In sports, you'd call that tampering. Yeah. And in fact, in business, you call that tampering. Mm. <laughs> and one of the measures in which whether you've had negotiations, not like, oh, I just had lunch with them and these throwing around ideas. There's a term sheet that was sent. There was like literally an opening offer. I don't think these guys realize what they've done here. I really don't. I think somebody, some good business reporter should be looking into this because if I'm the blaze and I find out that Crowder was going around soliciting offers that were coming in that are written and we have evidence of it now, I might find that actionable. Hmm. But that's a side note. This is also interesting is to like try and figure out what's going on here because I think Crowder either stepped in a like just a complete mess or has been doing some ham-fisted attempt to launch some other business. But here is uh, Boring giving us a timeline that Crowder didn't do two days ago. I hope that's true, but I can't take that risk. I've never seen that to be true. I've never launched any talent with zero dollars spent on marketing and picked up a third of the total subscribers that the entire Daily Wire has built in eight years in business. Oh, pause I it for one second. I Incidentally, um, Crowder claims he has 350,000 subscribers. Ding Dong just told us how many uh, subscribers, more or less, uh, Daily Wire has, which, according to him, is about a million fifty thousand. I don't know if that's true or not, but it gives us a sense maybe of the dollars they're talking about. Now, Boring's a smart guy, and all of this is incredibly calculated, so he may be pretending what that number is, but he just at the very least told us what Crowder's supposedly is. Uh, interesting benchmarks. Don't know how much you can buy it. Subscribers that the entire Daily Wire has built in eight years in business. I hope, I hope Stephen's right. I hope he makes unseemly amounts of money and is able to continue being an important voice in the movement for years and years to come. But that's not a risk that I could take. Stephen implied that he not only didn't like this $12.5 million a year number that I offered him, but that he thought it should be closer to $30 million a year. That's $120 million over four years just for Stephen's show. Pause it. I would now, I want you to remember that figure because Crowder is going to, in a later, uh, in, in his response to Boring, say this had nothing to do with money. It's hard to understand how this has nothing to do with money if he asks for more money. If he asks for the uh, contract extension that Damian Lillard got from the Blazers. Right. <laughs> I mean, no, like this contract is a high-end NHL contract. I think annual value Connor McDavid, the best player in the NHL, now, makes that. <laughs> maybe he's worth it. Or maybe he just, when he was in this, was insulted because he wants a Joe Rogan contract. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I mean, he's asking for, you know, what is it, like, uh, 30, he's almost doubled the amount of money. That's, that sounds like it's about money. But it's like, me. you want it, you say you're worth that. And like, one of the main reasons you're worth that is because of your YouTube channel. So like, of course, if you can't just say like that number stays constant, well, regardless of what happens to my YouTube Well, that's channel. why I think that what his taking issue with that clause is actually retroactive. I don't think he had that problem in September when he was approached. Remember, he's just said that they, uh, that Boring said, we approached him in September. Yeah. And we were talking to him in September. And then he let October, November, December go by, and then he contacts me, and he wants to restart uh, conversations about this. And wants, you know, double the money. Continue. $20 million over four years, just for Stephen's show. I would still have to spend those tens of millions of dollars uh, every year that I told you about on things like marketing and infrastructure and technology to support the show, the part that Steven's never done. As soon as he said that, I knew we'll never get to a deal. I can't, I can't guarantee $30 million a year. I didn't know how I was going to pay for 50. I thought, not that he isn't worth it, but that's a big risk. $120 million is an incalculable risk for a company uh, our size. Now, pause it. I just want to remind you, the, while he's, when Crowder is saying this to, to Boring, he is still under contract at the Blaze. 
Hmm. And my guess is he thinks he can go back to Glenn Beck with this offer that he's going to get from uh, Daily Wire if they go for this money and leverage it with Beck. So in addition to like the sort of like stuff that I think my guess is Beck has something actionable here on the blaze. This is the initial rejection four months ago, five months ago now, because it, it's going to be evidence that Crowder's lying about why he rejected this offer. Continue. $20 million is an incalculable risk for a company uh, our size. And again, I'm not saying Stephen isn't worth it. I hope he is. I hope he builds his own business. He'll make a ton of mistakes. He'll find out that he's wrong about a lot of how the business world works. <laughs> he'll learn and he'll grow because he's a smart, talented guy. Uh, and I hope he gets to a place where he's proving me wrong and he's making all that money. But that just was not a deal that the Daily Wire could possibly make. And we'd have to pay it even if he lost all the revenue or even if he lost enormous chunks of the revenue. It was just an impossible situation. And so Stephen said, we're gonna throw this deal out. I'm not even gonna mark it up. I'm not gonna negotiate it. Start over, send me a new deal. And because of his talent and because of our friendship, I thought about it for a minute. Talked to my partners about it for a few minutes. And I just realized what I already knew in my heart, which is Stephen's not a team player. That's not a knock. He has an enormous <laughs> individual talent. But he's not gonna be happy unless he's out on his own. And so I called him up. I said, hey, we're not gonna send a follow-up offer. I wanted you to hear it directly from me and not from lawyers and agents. I said, but the kind of deal you're looking for is not the kind of deal that we can make. He was super gracious, uh, appreciative, kind. We agreed to continue forward as we always had as friends. We do favors for each other. I told him, if you stay at the Blaze or if you go off on your own, go to Rumble, go wherever. Stay We're at the Blaze. To so all these conversations write stories about you and under promote you and have you on. Like, you know, we want you to be as successful as humanly possible. And we want to contribute to that. And we went our separate ways. And months went by. Months went by. October goes by, November goes by, December goes by. And then a week ago, in January, Stephen called me. And he said, hey man, uh, I can't unsee this contract that you sent me. I said, well, it's not a contract, it's a non-binding term sheet, it's a conversation starter, but okay. And he told me his perspective on it, that we were not paying him what he's worth, uh, that we don't understand his great business mind and that he's it's going to go exactly the way, that he, the way that he thinks and we're all going to be proven wrong. I said, again, I hope that's true, Stephen, but that's not a risk I can take. And then he said, and you're just an enforcer for big tech. You're hurting okay. young talent. So there it is. So he and calls. He, he's saying that stuff about the contract for the reason you're saying. He, wa he wants that out there, that they were negotiating while he was still under contract with the Blaze. I think that's purposeful. He's returned to the timeline well, they have cr Four, they have liability times. too. I think. Oh, really? If you knowingly interfere with someone's contract, mm. I think you you have liability on both ends. I think, as as far as I know, and because they must have known that he was under contract. I think I I, I don't I I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but I suspect that is a a, a problem for both. Now, um, the timeline here is Crowder doesn't talk to him for three months. October, he said, November, December, gets in contact with him the first week of January and says, I can't get this contract out of my head. What? 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 What the hell does that mean? Why did Crowder call Boring back up four months after he they had parted and said, we don't have a deal to be made, but we still like each other? He was haunted by this contract? What the hell does that even mean? I think he got scared and he well, saw that why. maybe oh, I disagree. Interesting. Why? Here's why you I want a content. Look, I, I you've, I, what do you mean? Well, we, I, I, I saw what Crowder said about this. So I know that he taped Jeremy boring for content okay. uh, for a clip. Oh yeah. Did you know? Oh yeah. You haven't seen this. No, I, 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 I have not seen this yet. Yeah. So, so here is, um, well, he, Crowder responds the next day to boring. And Crowder, he says in this video, do we have him say in this video? He's only recorded three people in his entire life on, <laughs> now I just happen to be sensitive to these type of things and Texas is a one party consent state. In other words, you can record somebody on your phone without the person on the other end knowing that. That is not the case in your, necessarily in your state. So be careful if you're a two party state, uh, 
you, you, you need consent. In Texas, you don't. Presumably called them from, from Texas. And so let's be clear on what happens here. Crowder gets offered $50 million in September of 2022. He says, I, that's not enough money. I need more. He's under contract, incidentally, with the Blaze at this time. I need, I need 120, or is it 130 million over the course of... Uh, yeah, 120 over four. Yeah. And... It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and Boring thinks about it for a day or two, and then he comes back and says, look, dude, we can't, make, we can't do that. It's just too risky for us. Let's stay friends. Okay, we're great. We love each other. Let's make sure that maybe sometime we can get together and, you know, uh, uh, be racist or, uh, you know, mock some, uh, you know, uh, trans people or, you know, figure out ways in which we can sort of like, um, you know, I I you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, mock, mock uh, yeah, homelessness or something like that. And we, yeah, we'll get together. We'll have a cigar and we'll talk and we'll laugh at uh, homeless people or something. Uh, and then they don't. That's it. That's the end of it. Until three and a half months later, Crowder calls Boring with a tape recorder. <laughs> Play this. Oh, sorry. We... Also, I should say, um, Crowder is um, nervous. You can always tell when Crowder's nervous because he has trouble breathing. Yeah. Breath. He's breathing good. Yeah. And he's, he's a little bit nervous. He doesn't like conflict. He doesn't like conflict. And that's why he's got to be so beefy. And again, no holsters today. I'm strapped. I got my gun on my waist. You can always tell when Crowder's nervous. It's really funny. Uh, he's for such a guy who's so much there. Okay, go ahead. Budget. That is true. Okay. First off, I think it's a good thing for conservative companies out there to be gener generating or capable of generating far more than that can't even talk and it'd be better than just disney and just netflix and just hulu plus and i'd like the people who are in charge of that to be people who are willing to walk away from that if it comes with strings attached with people who hate everything you stand for so oh wait wait, wait let's this is, is this clip number two it, it, do we want to start with the, the call do you want to go to the call first i was doing the why i'm walking away let's go to the call okay. first this is the call so he he's going to record uh, uh, people know and acknowledge exactly what's being done to the next generation of creators. Rich talent, young talent, they don't get deals like this. So they, get, they don't get deals that... They can be wage slaves for a little bit, come over and make a salary and grow their brand. That you then own. Yep. Well, I own parts of it. I don't own it. They can, when their contract's up, they can still go out and they'll still be famous. They can keep doing their shows. So go do a show somewhere else. They'll be in a far, far, far better place. You help to make them. No, no, I'm not looking at this contract. This contract owns it in perpetuity even after the contract. You're paying a lease but getting ownership. That's what this contract on is. Con on the content that we paid to produce, yes. Pause. Look, okay. So in other words... All right, so he did want to do this for content. That's what I missed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the Crowder is not an idiot. Yeah. He knows that, like, every single person you've ever watched on TV, Jon Stewart, Jon Stewart leaves The Daily Show. He can't, he doesn't own The Daily Show mm -hmm. stuff. You know, uh, if, uh, I mean, like, every talent you see on TV, they don't own their content. That's capitalism for you. Yeah. They don't own their content. They have decided to trade in their independence or they have decided like, I can only launch my career off of the platform that they've built. That's the way it works. You don't own that content. He know Crowder knows this. Because Crowder's done this to people. He's like, well, he's used, he's had people on his show that he's yeah, used like for that content. Yeah, like Benjamin guy or whatever. Like, Sven I mean, Computer, like yeah. people have had contractual issues with him where Crowder has actually accrued and capitalized off of their work. There's yeah. no way in a million years that Steven Crowder's contract with all those ding dongs in his, in, his, uh, in his office doesn't say you are a work for hire. That is a term of art in the entertainment industry. You are a work for hire, which means that your content that you develop belongs to me. 
Like, like even like, I think like Michael and I had, maybe it was just an email where those words were in there. Like, and theoretically, like even the stuff like, um, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, right wing Mandela, I could have said like, I'm sorry, you developed that on my show. That's my, my, my content. Now, Conan lost a lot of characters. Uh, totally. And TBS. Totally. This is just the way it works. He knows this. It's a problem of capitalism. Now, well, here's the other thing. Crowder not only knows this, Crowder has not only done it in the past, but Crowder doesn't believe that is onerous in any way because he does not believe that you can get into an exploitive contract because that's not the way capitalism works in his mind. Mm hmm. He does not believe that you can be exploited. They're voluntary. It's a completely voluntary uh, thing. Yeah. How does he square that, though, with calling this a, quote, slave contract, which is like. Well, I mean, he doesn't say that. Boring says that. Boring says. No, there, but he's called it earlier. Well, slave yes, contract. earlier. And the other. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And 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 so he called it that because he knew he had that tape. Right. Now, when he did his first video two days ago. Well, all right, listen, uh, now listen to why Crowder supposedly is doing this. Crowder wants to make the argument to his audience that this is about the movement. I want, just you, free, I want sure. younger people to come, come behind me and be able to own their own content. And um, like, it's almost like he's laying out the vision of like what his company would be, huh. theoretically. I mean, like if he's guaranteeing contracts to people regardless of how they're able to monetize YouTube, that company's not going to be around. Right, for exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but he's trying to he's trying to make this like he is sincere, that it's not about the money for him. It's about fighting big tech. That's why he got into this, to fight big tech. When he launched his YouTube show, he's like, I'm going to do this because I don't like YouTube. <laughs> but here operation budget, meaning 25, 30 employees, all of the costs, security, health insurance, would have been somewhere in the, uh, the, the $50 million ballpark uh, for that total operational budget. That is true. Okay. Yeah, positive. Like, you see how, like, you could tell he's nervous mm -hmm. because he, this is not something he wanted to reveal. Remember, he did the first uh, video about the contract. He held it up. He could have said, it. now, to be fair, it was for $50 million, but that's not the point. That's when he said the slave contract thing. So now that the, mo the money is revealed, it looks a little dumb when he calls it a slave contract. There's and a, by and the way, every Friday off to four weeks of vacation. Yeah, like, I didn't know that slaves had contracts with their owners. I mean, they should yeah. have had a lawyer look it up so that they wouldn't be enslaved. There's well, a headline whatever. of Crowder's going back to the Kaepernick era since Kaepernick compares contract to slave. And he, yeah, and he got really, really up in arms about that. Yes. Whoops. And, and so now he's got to reveal the 50 million and you can see how the breath almost leaves his body as he's saying that number and he's got a pre he's got a he's got a he's got to um he's got to preface it with like i've got to pay for security and 30 people work in that operation yeah total operating i mean you thought twitter says. was uh they had to trim fat at twitter yeah <laughs> right um and, and but he's got to pay for security uh, which is really expensive. Someone's got to uh, dust the gun on Health insurance. <laughs> I, I mean, it's possible he offers, uh, you know, like full health insurance. It's it's not nothing, but I got news for you, folks. Like, we pay for insurance for, or half insurance for, you know, four, five, six people. Yeah, but. And it's not, it's expensive, but it's not that wow. expensive. Like, I mean, Carter might be. I got news for you. If you say fifty million, if you say like you know, like <laughs> you say fifty million to me, like everybody here, you got two health insurances. <laughs> yeah, okay, Carter Every, might be on that. People who visit the, the studio, you got health insurance too. Like, Harry, like giving every, them out like Oprah. Health yeah, exactly. Insurance like, under your exactly, seat. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, just walk down the street. They're like, incidentally, hey, how are you? You uh, know, here's here's the health insurance. Carter might have that Bolsonaro premium but, though. But secure, <laughs> security. <laughs> Security too. They got. They can pay for security. They can pay for security. Yeah. Why does he need security? I thought he had some guns holes. Yeah. Wait, like yeah. I, wait, wait, wait. You, you can't. You can't protect yourself with yeah, that big bad dude, gun. Buddy? You got a gun on your holster doing you doing your show. You need security. But okay. But watch. Just watch this and then let it roll. But watch how the breath just like literally leaves his body as he has to save fifty million dollars. 
course of four or five years, the total operational budget, meaning 25, 30 employees, all of the costs, security, health insurance, would have been somewhere in the, uh, the, the $50 million <laughs> ballpark $50 million. Uh, for that total operational budget. That is true. Yeah. Okay. First off, I think Tight. it's a good thing for conservative companies out there to be gener generating or capable of generating far more than that. And it'd be better than just Disney and just Netflix and just Hulu Plus. And I'd like the people who are in charge of that to be people who are willing to walk away from that if it comes with strings attached, with people who hate everything you stand for. So let's take that at face value. Okay? I, I'm, positive. I'm not even sure I understand what that means. Like, you would want to walk away from the ability to generate that money from, from YouTube? the people that you get the money from. Be my guest, Steven. Get off YouTube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> walk away from YouTube. Show some principle. I yeah. mean, let's be clear here. Right. And I think Boring may have made this point. Crowder may not be making money off of YouTube, but he is big enough that he makes YouTube money. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. demonetized, but YouTube isn't. Yeah. Yeah, they just get all of it. <laughs> Four. So let's take that at face value, okay? I want you to ask yourself this question, mm. okay? Put yourself in my shoes. Mm. What would it take? How much do your principles matter to you? <laughs> what kind of a headspace would you have to be in to walk away full stop from $50 million? Let me ask you even further. What would it take for you to be willing to walk away from at least $50 million because of it causing harm to someone else that doesn't even affect you? Pause it for a second. But the you know what it would take for me to walk away from $50 million? The sincere belief that I was worth $130 million. <laughs> That's what it would take for me to walk away from $50 million. The, the, and not even that I was worth $130 million, but that I could get $130 million. That's what, that's what it would take. I wonder how Carter's like, staff feels like, about I was going to say, like, yeah, like, like, do you think when... I, you got to help me out here. I am, somebody gets offered $70 million for you know, six years to pitch for whomever it is, that they go like, you know what? I don't like the usage of left-handers in their bullpen, coming from the bullpen. Yeah. And if I, if I sign for that, I'll be advocating that. Now, it's, I can get $85 million right. from the Yankees. That's what it is. This guy is, is retconning why he walked away from this because that doesn't apply the thing about uh i should be valued for my youtube subs just like and and by that i'm looking out for the small people who don't have that subscriber base on youtube that that doesn't apply that it's not the same his thing. argument that he's making is that if you take money from me when youtube uh demonetizes me then you are essentially helping youtube try to discipline what i do on youtube mm. but as boring says crowder's quite aware of this dynamic and he does it himself because he doesn't get banned from youtube he walks the line so yes. he doesn't get banned from youtube yep. so he can pull people into his mug club that's his business that's his business strategy that's the yeah. entire basis of conservative hand wringing over uh twitter or youtube policy is that they feel it's not uh, when they actually get disciplined for saying something racist or bigoted that it's not a, an effective enough funnel for their subscription model which is what they're primarily concerned about right. that's what they're most worried that's what he's worried about that's and why, his yeah. argument is you are silencing people on the daily wire on their free youtube thing and i'm not going to be a part of that but here is why everything he is saying is total bullshit because his fight big con was registered on december 12th just a couple of days before he got booted off of of the blaze which we know was around like the 14th or 15th because of this video from the quartering. Well, first off, put up the registration uh, on, the, on the who is thing. And to be fair, Tim Pool also found this, but it was it was the first thing I did too. It's like when did he when did he register stop big con? Hmm. And he registered on December twelfth. 
of 2022. And then the question becomes like, did he do this because of the Daily Wire? Or was Big Con something he registered because he was like, it looks like my Blaze contract's not going to be renewed? Because we know that the quartering, this dude, I don't know who this dude is, but we played this at the time. He got, he talks, is this where he talks about he got the phone call in the middle of the night? I got problems with my email list. I need to yeah. build. Yeah. Okay. Talk about this because what this having been fired, like I think three times from Air America, depending on who the owner was at any <laughs> given time. I, I, I know what this was, was about. Like you think like I'm not going to get fired. All of a sudden you get fired or you think your contract's going to get renewed. It's not going to get renewed. And then you're like, oh shit, I got to get on this. Um, and here's the quartering talking about that. This, I don't know who this dude is, but he's like, I guess he does internet stuff too and a show. Yeah, he's like a Tim Pool. <laughs> oh my God, this Trump NFT. <laughs> what was he thinking? He's got to get better people around him. If, if, uh, if I sound cashed, uh, it's because I was up all night long uh, fixing Steven Crowder's website. Uh, along with uh, a very, 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 very good friend of mine. Um, you may know uh, the name MetaPCs, but um, Zach from MetaPCs, sick, up all night with me, uh, getting it handled for him, get it over to a proper server. And so while Steven gave me a ton of shine in his video, uh, I couldn't have done it without, without Zach um, yeah. and MetaPCs. All right. So the context is uh, that Crowder tried to set up a website to get a bunch of emails and it crashed. Right. And you don't do that um, in the last minute unless like you're, you're sort of blindsided. And, I, and, and you realize Glenn Beck is going to own those emails. Yes. And that's right at the time that he does the big con, you know, uh, fight big con or whatever that uh, website is. I'm quite convinced that he thought he was going to launch that site against the blaze. And then when he realized, like, whatever happened here, he realized he missed the window <laughs> to get the place. Like, his website's down. Yeah, and also, like, the, the quartering guy here is kind of speaking for Crowder and basically saying, please help Steven out because he can't really speak up for himself right now, which makes me think, like, there may be some NDA or something. There the could place. have been, you know, when these things happen, there could have been some type of, like, exit strategy thing, and they said, but you can't, you know, you can own this, but no non-disparage clause. So that's why you had to say this isn't the blaze in that other clip. Yes, mm -hmm. non-disparage clause. So then he's sitting around over the past month, and he's taking Christmas vacation. He's trying to figure out what the mug club's going to do, because he wasn't putting out any videos, right? I mean... Oh, he's been quiet. And he's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to launch my business? Because everybody in this business knows that the way you do it is you make a big splash. If you're like a YouTube entrepreneur is you pick a fight with somebody. You pick a fight and you blow things up. It's a tried and true strategy. It's a tried and true strategy. People do it when they launch their shows all the time. Maybe I'm going to invite somebody on, sandbag him on a debate, and yeah. try and make it the biggest video I've ever had or yeah. something like that. Who and then knows? milk it for like three years. <laughs> that's possible. But that's certainly what I think Crowder did here. I think Crowder is you had decided from the beginning, I'm going to use this as a way of launching either relaunching, uh, you know, the mug club or maybe even trying to do some type of network thing or something. And he's going to go out on his own and, and do this because he thinks he's worth $130 million a year. That's delusional. Or, you know, $130 million over four years. How much do you think Tucker Carlson makes a year? Probably 15, 20. I have no idea. I mean, Crowder could be if he keeps his YouTube, if he keeps on the right side of YouTube and is able to monetize that. I, I mean, he, he may <laughs> be, if he bows to big tech. He may be right, but understand how he's selling this to his audience. Yeah. He is selling this to his audience as I am standing up for you. Like, look, Crowder knows if he's going to launch his show and he can't disparage um, the blaze because of whatever it is that they gave him that he wanted when he left. He can't disparage the blaze. 
Maybe it signed something before then. I don't know. But that's typical. Who, who is his competition? It's the Daily Wire. Yep. It's the Daily Wire. And so he's, if he's not going to be part of their thing because they don't have the money to pay him, he's going to make it. And maybe his dad told him to do this. I don't know. Like his dad doesn't care about his friendships with people. <laughs> But dad, he, they're my friends. They, 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 they. I got the gun. Um, and, and this is what he's doing. This is all just a scammy scam. Yeah. And even the people... No at, honor among thieves. No honor among thieves. <laughs> and, and you know who knows it? You know who knows it? Is the underlings at the Daily Wire. They all know it. And they're the ones who are sent out and they're unleashed to go and say it. Here's, um, here's what, uh, here's, here's Candace Owens calling Crowder out on, um, on her own show. This is just yesterday. Behind. They all, you know, now Shapiro just like sort of like said, oh, go watch a boring uh, video. And they're going to stay above the fray. Mm-hmm. They're gonna say like it's like, like but they're gonna send out Owens and Walsh. Well, she's to do always the real willing time. to do the dirty work for of uh, for her employer. Nothing happened here other than nobody wanted to pay Stephen Crowder one hundred and twenty million dollars. So he turned to his viewers who he thinks are stupid. Stupid enough, please not to understand how business negotiations work, right? Like this is like normal. You kick it back and forth, and they were gonna make up for his loss. So people that are upset by his video, the million of millions of people who watched it, are now going to give him a dollar, whatever it, it costs to be in the mug club, and they're gonna become the hundred and twenty million dollars that he feels that he deserves. First of all, we're gonna say this unrelatable, unrelatable. People are trying to pay for bacon and eggs right now at the grocery store, trying to buy a steak once a week, <laughs> and you're over here crying because somebody couldn't meet you at $120 million, and it is crying. I don't like it. It was a total bitch move. There are plenty of things that happen across all organizations in the conservative movement where I will say that I empathize and with Steven Crowder and saying that sometimes you feel like a cynic, which is like, is everybody selling out? Are people doing this, people doing that? There are a lot of things that Daily Wire has done that I disagree with. There's a lot of things that Turning Point has done that I disagree with. Uh, there are things perhaps that PragerU has done that I disagree with. I have worked with all of these companies, right? But to do a total hey, bitch too. move and go out to the public rather than trying to resolve these things and these, and these slight differences behind the scenes and to make it seem like you're the hero and you're the true one and you keep it authentic when something really nothing happened other than you didn't like an initial term sheet and all you had to do was tell them that and tell them what you didn't like and go back and forth with lawyers like everybody else i think it's crappy i think it's i, I think steven is a, a little egocentric he probably will do better on his own i don't think he knows how to plan a team and by the way the last thing i'm going to say because i'm going on tim pool tonight so i'm going to say it anyways later is that i'm pretty sure wasn't it Steven Crowder, who also screwed over somebody he used to work with, was it not Gay Jared? Because he had him tied up in a contract. Wasn't that Steven Crowder who did that? Mm. So is he supposed to be the moral high bar? Are we not supposed to call him out for that? Here, here's the thing. Steven, Ooh. why don't you release not Gay Jared from his NDA and allow him to talk about how he felt he was treated by you? Because I know that at the blaze, everyone says that you're actually not that nice. You treat people poorly, but you bring in so much revenue that everybody just has to take it. So Let's I don't go. like it. This it stinks to high heaven. And I'm calling you out on that because I think it's, it was crappy that you threw mud on me. Did it the first time via a tweet a long time ago. You're not doing it a second time. Total yeah. bitch move. Next. All right. You're you're a little bitch. Now here's that's what, that's what she said. She said you're a little bitch, Crowder. You're a little bitch. First off, um, release release uh, that guy from not gay Jared, please. Not gay Jared from the NDA. Mm -hmm. That should be a hashtag for people. Honestly, and computer too. I think. Listen, and come on the majority report. Listen, I just okay. want to say, look. Obviously, I have no dog in this fight. As far as I'm concerned, the dogs in this fight, with all due respect to dogs, I wouldn't say this. I'm saying this metaphorically. Both can eat each other. Yeah, I, I would I, like to see both of them simultaneously get into a situation where they grab around each other's necks yeah. and bite simultaneously. My dog in they this fight, like a like a like a reservoir dog situation. Yeah. My dog in this fight is whichever dog appears to be losing at the moment. So we need to support that dog <laughs> exactly. to get back on its feet. But, yeah. but because of that, because I don't genuinely have a dog in this fight, I feel like I could mediate it. And so I think mm -hmm. the honorable thing to do is to release not gay jared from the nda i think that's i think that has to happen before we bring anybody together if the conservative 
online community is going to unify that has to happen. And I thought these and guys I, were I, the free speech warriors, too. I'm, I'm surprised that, that they uh, include NDAs in their contracts since they're so principled about everybody being able to say what they feel. That seems exploitive to me. Yeah. But what would I, be really interesting, and this would be really actually quite fun, if Lena Khan at the FTC has her way, I wonder about that non-disclosure. I wonder if it also parts, like, involves... It's retroactive? Like, well, the, I guess theirs is a non-compete. We should get rid of non-disclosures to us. Oh, yeah. Sort of like in, in favor of that. But, all right. So, the swamp. so, okay. This is an interesting clip of Candace Owens because it's the first time she said anything that makes any sense, which is she knows what he's doing because she does the same damn thing. They, they, like, they're, they're, they're all scammy as hell. Yeah. Lying that there is some like higher purpose of what they're doing. Crowder's not doing this to protect younger people. What has Crowder ever done for someone... Who is Crowder? Everybody on his show is older than him. What young guy is Crowder brought in to the thing? He's just like found like used people in the trash heap and said like, come on the show. I can pay, underpay you. You got nothing to well, go maybe for. maybe Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. I guess, but is he, yeah. is he really, he's not paying? No, 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 just, just exposed. Is he open up a door? Maybe next. Yeah, maybe that's I mean, is he, star. has he offered his platform to anybody? Like when has Steven Crowder helped anybody? bring the people behind him just to write up on this not gay jared thing by the way jared's uh decision to leave has also been linked to Sven computers alleged that the show was facing a financial crisis and the hosts of the show were not being paid their salaries at the time when he resigned from the position one of the crew members members Sven computer was owed ten thousand dollars in unpaid wages and this was tearing the crew apart oh that's how you um that's how you bring you just know, looking out that's for how people. you don't pull up the the ladder and the people <laughs> behind you uh, by not paying you pull up the ten thousand dollars exactly <laughs> exactly yeah you but i still gave you a ladder um here is candace owens well no and here's matt walsh from uh the daily wire weighing in on on all this negotiations ended amicably then he called weeks after the fact actually it turned out to be months it's hard to know who who to who to disbelieve uh from the daily wire because they're all pathological liars so it's hard to know which person you should distrust more but then he called weeks after the fact and secretly recorded the conversation so he could pull this stunt that's the point he, he walsh understands what this is too it's a stunt uh, it's one of the lowest things I've ever seen in this business. A total betrayal of his friends and people have supported and helped him. And Walsh is a total bottom feeder. So when he says that, you know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no sane person will ever do business with a man who treats his friends like this and secretly records phone calls with a person he's known for years. He'll get his YouTube views out of this, though. I hope it was worth it for him. Well, he believes it will. It won't be just the YouTube uh, from this one video. This is his entire business. Plan. Do you think it'll work out for him? I don't. Because I'm literally. I, I, don't. I checked out the comments on uh, that that video of, of Crowder's, and they're they're like they say his audience. This is a miscalculation. Yeah. I like you both. Uh, I, I hate. It hurts them to see them fighting like it, this. But it really does. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. But. but he says if you're dumb enough to buy the I'm just looking out for young creator shtick in that call, I don't know what to tell you. He knew it was being recorded and that he'd release it he was performing in the call for his audience you need to be smart enough to see that walsh is right i mean listen like i say i don't have a dog in this fight i, I, I you know i if um i wouldn't let either one of these guys clean my bathroom with a toothbrush let's put it that way that's what you say when you don't want to get litigation or you don't want to be offensive mm. and um but I, I got to admit, when Walsh is right, he's right. He's a, Crowder is duping his people. And also, he's also exposing the Daily Wire because that, that comment is going to stick with Jeremy Boring about the, they'll get to be wage slaves a little bit. Every time the Daily Wire tries to launch a new talent, well, mm. that's what I'm going to call it. Well, mm. but, that's it. but it's worse than that for the Daily Wire because we know the Daily Wire employs exploitive practices because... I happen to agree with Crowder. I think that contract is exploited. Mm -hmm. It's just that Crowder has never con admitted that an exploitive contract could exist. Yep. But I agree with his assessment for the one time, like the... the He's sort of creator union. The, the, the currents of... I think the... Yes. <laughs> I think it's disgusting the way that they treat their people at the Daily Wire. And I think people should boycott the Daily Wire. I mean, this yeah. is what collective bargaining is for, isn't it? Here is um, Candace Owens on Tim Pool. And of course, Tim Pool 
He's he the only smart one in all of this. Because he's got Crowder coming on Monday. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Now, is it me or is Tim Pool just adding weapons to behind him every day? Oh, yeah. That's how I got Yeah. I got news for you. That guitar does not kill fascists. That guitar actually um, it accompanies fascists. It plays Ace of Bass covers. Exactly. But, <laughs> uh, here is uh, Tim Pool with Candace Owens. He's on this. They all rush to Tim Pool because, and I just want to say, like, look, available. If, if, if Candace Owens wants to come on the show and dish on Crowder, if Crowder wants to come on, dish on Daily Wire. I, this is I, a labor dispute. We're I, will, I will give them free reign for the first 15, 20 minutes. And then maybe we'll talk about some other things. But they'll have the first 20 minutes unencumbered. Just to you know. these terms. And they don't. And, have and in that and in that capacity, he hits Brett Cooper, right? Now he's basically so who who is a young upcoming talent that got signed with the Daily Wire? We, there's only what five hosts of shows on the Daily Wire. I mean, so you're, you're talking about Matt Matt Walsh? No, he's not young upcoming talent that's just been signed. Are you talking about Michael Knowles? No, he's not young upcoming. Talent. You're not talking about Ken Stones. I don't think we would say Andrew Clavin is young upcoming talent. No way. So you're talking about Brett Cooper. That's insulting to Brett Cooper. You have no idea. What, he's just saying shit, right? And it's not like he's. Really reached out to us and said, hey, like, I'm doing this for all of us. Like, it's not he reached out independently to Daily Wire host and been like, are you dealing with this agree these egregious terms? No, he is doing this purely. Let's not even try to make this anything but a selfish act that was to benefit Steven Crowder, who wants to launch his own network because, and by the way, I gotta say this, this is the most important part of this, and nobody is talking about this. He receives the term sheet, okay, and he thinks it's so egregious that he's got to make this video four months later, right? I don't know what happened in those four months months after they started negotiating i guess steven crowder woke up new year new me i hate the i hate the daily wire so i'm gonna go after them he he thinks it's so egregious the first thing he does is counteroffer and say let's start talking about 140 million okay so if it was so outrageous why did he go back to them and say no actually we can have this conversation but let's start talking about 140 million right it was only when the daily wire then turned that down that the term sheet became so egregious that he had to do something about it I'll, I'll just add real quick to everybody. Steven Crowder is coming on the show on Monday. <laughs> I know he's not here to defend himself. Did you speak you know. to him? Because he might have recorded your conversation. So you might well, want to come about whatever the hell it is you said to him. I mean, I, I, I got to say, this is really, uh, this is, um, this might be the most juvenile uh, like video or like thing that we've ever talked about on this show. And we've talked about some pretty juvenile things. And we but have this is six thousand like, people uh, watching right now. So. <laughs> so, there you, there go. you go, capitalism. Um, but this is—I mean, look, I gotta say, like again, I don't have a dog in this fight. But I think Candace Owens is right. But I also think that she stumbled upon this concept of worker solidarity, which she's talking about, mm -hmm. and is criticizing Crowder for you know leveraging really the solidarity that, that that should be there amongst workers against the uh the management it, it has been so instructive how when they get into this fight both of them both parties have basically accepted many of the terms that people on the left progressives even center left have talked about the idea of exploitive contracts, the idea that there is asymmetry in the marketplace and that people can be stuck in exploitive agreements and that the relationship between management and workers can be exploitive. They've all conceded that. They have all conceded this one point, which they have argued the entire existence of their public lives against. They've talked about like the idea of like, lack of solidarity mm -hmm. amongst workers i mean the wage they've all so it's funny because like crowder's, crowder's call to action is like he says like oh, this is all creators but really it's join the mug club and support me and my show yes uh, and it's not like we should all like start a, a creator's union to <laughs> fight they, these contracts and they also have made it clear too the incredible amounts of money that they must have been invested in these type of operations. Like when people talk about like how absolutely out of control, you know, TYT is, they got an investment over the course of like, I don't know, four or five years or something of, of $20 million to have an operation that is at least as large as, as, as what the daily wire daily wire, the amount of money that must have poured in there 
that they can acquire Prager University too, and they, and he considered, they acquired the conservative, like, and they can see, and he considered one hundred and thirty million dollars. They've got a lot of money. They've got a lot of money, and it didn't come out of nowhere. You don't buy a million dollars worth of Facebook ads like like Ben Shapiro did a couple of years ago, based upon your operating revenue. That no, no, no. They have money that is invested in there, and I don't think that money expects returns, you know, 100x, 10x returns like venture capital money generally does. And That's if you're crowded, that would drive you crazy if you knew it was there to be taken and they're not giving it to you. Yes. Huh. And I bet you Crowder thinks that he can access that money too. Yeah. Now, it remains to be seen whether he can get somebody to come in, but... I think Candace Owens is on to something in terms of like, because something happened over this period of time. And uh, it, it, it wasn't the story that Crowder's doing. No. Telling. So, no. I mean, Crowder has, let's just, let's just go run down this just to, to, to summarize. Crowder lies to his audience. Crowder concedes that his vision of capitalism has also been a lie because he believes in an exploitive contract and that can't exist under everything he's ever said about uh, capitalism. We know that the right wing uh, has huge slush fund, that they are not self-made people. They've all been funded by billionaires. Boring admitted as much about his company and all the companies that Crowder, that has propped Crowder up. He's worked for three different, four different enterprises, mm -hmm. all funded by billionaires. Are you kidding me? Um, and we know that they're all just like uh, scallywags who are pointing at the other ones for being scallywags. So this has been both fun, yes, but also I think very educational. And again, want to reiterate, if you guys need somebody who is a completely like totally neutral in this, I am willing to sit down with all of you privately and mediate or to do it on, on camera if you want or to talk to you individually. My door is open. You guys know how to reach me. Yeah. I also do think it's notable that she mentioned that who's going to come calling uh, now that you recorded the contract and, and pulled this card here. Because if he is trying to dip into that pool of venture capital money that you say, Sam, perhaps this public fight and recording might scare some people off. He might have gambled a little bit uh maybe maybe it came up snake eyes but look know. there's always you know what we used to call in the film business dentist money and except for the the dentist money in uh the conservative right wing thing is like some billionaire like you know like the late foster freeze who just has an idea and is also like you know right wing radical and it just like okay i mean people paid uh you know charlie kirk to run a youth movement and all it did was in the one state he focused on had the worst youth numbers possible like the they're so all ideological. yeah yeah i mean he called it big con he can't help himself he's telling on himself a little Let's bit get the drop one more time brother big tech is in bed with big con yeah there we go